And it came from God. God did that. The devil didn't do that. God did that. Amen. So we see it. Some horrible judgments coming. Do you hear what I said? Coming. And while he's prophesying this, I'm going to read verse 12 again. He said, And you shall know that I am the Lord, for you have not walked in my statutes, neither executed my judgments, but have done after the manners of the heathen that are round about you. You live in like the world. So judgment's coming. Amen? And as we look at it further down, the Bible says, as soon as Ezekiel's prophesying this message of judgment, that fault, one of those false teachers, Jazaniah, we have, and we have Pelatea. Pelatea dies right there. He just dies. Serves as a warning from God to all these people they're preaching to that that man's a liar. My judgment's coming. Verse 13 came to pass when I prophesied that Pilatil the son of Benaiah died. Then fell I down upon my face and cried with a loud voice and said, Oh Lord God, wilt thou make a full end of the remnant of Israel? He's concerned about the remnant, see, those that are left over. Now God, in the midst of all of this judgment that happened in the days of Nebuchadnezzar's invasion upon the land of Israel, and it's a foreview, of, a preview of what's coming in the future tribulation period. Because Jesus prophesied in Matthew chapter 24 from the same Mount of Olives, the judgments of God that are coming in the great tribulation period upon the land of Israel. Amen? And the world eventually. Are you with me? He prophesied the second judgment, the temple would be destroyed, and it was in 70 A.D. by Titus. And then he talks about the end times, judgments that are coming. Brothers and sisters, I'm just telling you, when the judgments of God begin to fall upon the land of Israel and then eventually upon the whole world, we're talking about horrific events. It's coming. Verse 16, but what about the remnant? Ezekiel said, what about the remnant? There are going to be some that are saved. There are going to be some that belong to me. There are going to be some that are marked with that tav, if you will, that cross. The sigh and cry over the abominations that are in the church. That are truly saved. That are truly my people. The remnant, those that are remaining. Amen. There be some. There's a few called the remnant that will be saved. And so God says this. Therefore say thus saith the Lord, verse 16, although I have cast them far off among the heathen and although I have scattered them among the countries, yet will I be to them a little sanctuary in the countries where they shall come. He said, I've still got a little remnant. and They belong to me. They're saved. They're filled with my spirit. They obey my word. They walk with me in obedience to me. And he said, that little group of people called the remnant, he said, I'm going to be, this is, this is the Lord Jesus himself. He said, I'm going to be a little sanctuary for them. I'm going to be the temple for them. I'm going to protect those. Amen. So let's keep reading. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, I will even gather you from, among, from the people. And assemble you out of the countries where you have been scattered. And I will give you the land of Israel. Amen. So he's promising their return. It's a promise, right? In the midst of judgment, God promises. Amen. They shall come thither and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof. And all the abominations thereof from thence. And I will give them one heart. I will put, my, put a new spirit within you. And I will take the stony heart out of your flesh and will give them a heart of flesh. See, here's what he's saying. He said, I'm going to get you out of captivity. If you'll turn to me, if you'll live for me, if you'll be filled with my spirit, if you'll walk with me, if you'll obey me, he said, I will protect you and I'll get you out of your captivity. I'll gather you, praise God, because you belong to me. It's an awesome promise in the midst of judgment for those that few. 
that are going to be obedient to God. Amen. Amen. Those that are full of the spirit of the living God. Now, the desolation can be reversed. How can the desolation in the soul be reversed? It's by the new birth. So Jesus comes. The glory of God comes. The days of Jesus. It returns in the days of Jesus. God in flesh. And he walks into that temple. And he looks at the people in that day. And he says this. Except you be born again of the water and the spirit. You can't enter into the kingdom of God. But I'm here to reverse the desolate soul. I'm here to return. I'm here to move into your temple and fill you with my spirit. You see, who he's talking about here right now in this passage is you. Obviously, there are little fulfillments to it in relationship to Israel and their land. I get all of that. But you are the remnant that belongs to God. Who are filled with the spirit of God. Who are not desolate in, in your soul who have a relationship with God, who walk with God and obey God. And God says, I will protect you. And I'll reverse the desolation that's in your soul. I'll reverse the captivity. And it's by the new birth. Amen. Verse 20. That you may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them. And they shall be my people and I will be their God. Amen. Amen. But as for them whose heart walketh after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense their way upon their own heads, saith the Lord God. Then did the cherubim lift up their wings and the wheels beside them, and the glory of God of Israel was over them above. And the glory of the Lord went up from the midst of the city and stood upon the mountain which is on the east side of the city. What an awesome, long-suffering God You think about it. In the church age, about 2,000 years or so. 2,000 years. How merciful and gracious God is. Some people say, well, why isn't he pouring out his judgment right now? It's because he's long-suffering. He's merciful and he's gracious and he's loving. And he's waiting for people to get right. I don't know when the last soul is going to be when he comes in. But when the last soul comes into the church, that's when the judgment's going to fall. Amen? Amen? The loving, lingering merciful grace of God even in this situation afterward the spirit that took me up and brought me in vision by the spirit of God in the Chaldea to them of the captivity so the vision that I, I had seen went up from me amen. amen then I spake unto them the captivity all the things that the Lord had showed me amen, amen. so there's a promise when he's a ab- divine abandonment When God is leaving, he's getting out of town, if you will. He's leaving promises behind about how he can be a little sanctuary to those that walk with him, that are filled with his spirit, that keep his his ordinances and his statutes, that live for him in holiness, amen, Amen. making promises even in that. That's the awesome love of God. So verse 25 tells us, now he returns back over to Babylon. And he sits in front of those elders and he tells them what's coming. They no doubt thought, yeah, God is fixing to send us back out of this. We're going home soon. Everything's going to be wonderful. And, Eli- and, and Ezekiel's bringing this message, you know. And Ezekiel sits in front of them and says, judgment's coming. Judgment's coming. Now listen. When he sits in front of those elders, they're already in captivity. They're already in Babylon. But he's saying, what I saw in Jerusalem, what's coming to Jerusalem is the judgments of God Almighty. And now I'm back in Babylon. I'm sitting in front of you elders. I'm telling you what's coming. You thought something different was going to happen. You thought we would go home soon. You thought security. We could depend on that, even in sin. But Ezekiel sat down right with them in captivity. Now listen, they're already captive They're not going to experience the burning of the city of Jerusalem. They're not going to experience when the temple is burned with fire and the flesh is burning. Old men, young men, women, children. They're not going to experience it. They're already in captivity. But the problem is, in captivity, their theology is wrong. Because the whole time, 
Ezekiel is preaching, tells them what's coming to Jerusalem. They don't believe him. Amen. First Peter chapter 4, as I come to a close tonight. I'd be honest with you tonight that you know God has allowed me, I believe, personally, and I'm not speaking for God or saying something about God that might not be true, but I believe God tonight has allowed me just to keep it down a little bit so that you wouldn't think that he was mad at you. He's not mad at this church. He loves you and he cares about you. And he's showing you that in the midst of judgment, he remembers mercy. And how gracious and how long-suffering he is with every one of us, brothers and sisters. And how many times do we grieve his spirit by the attitudes of our hearts? Would to God that we have the mark of God on our foreheads, that we think right. That our minds are not deluded as the book of the Bible talks about in Thessalonians in the last days. That God would send a strong delusion to those that did not believe the truth but believe a lie. Because they didn't receive a love for the truth. They might be saved. God will send a strong delusion to them. Their minds will be deluded. Let our minds not be deluded. Let us not be deceived. Let us have the mark of God upon our foreheads that keeps our minds from being deceived and being deluded because we belong to God and are full of His Spirit and walk with Him. 4.17 For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God and if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel? Amen. The righteous scarcely be saved. Where shall the, the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. So it's a warning. It's a message of warning to us that if we live like the world, we'll be judged like the world. But it's a message also of the love and mercy of grace, how he lingers and how he is so long-suffering with us Jesus Christ died on that cross after three and a half years of ministry he died on that cross so that we could reverse be reversed in a desolate soul in Ezekiel chapter 40 through 48 we see the future eschatological temple that's going to be built in Jerusalem and guess what's going to happen Ezekiel 43, Jesus is going to return to that temple in the kingdom. And you know what you're going to find there? You're going to find true worshipers of God. We're standing in there worshiping God and serving God and being obedient to God. Amen. Because even after all of these judgments, God still made a way to save. And that was by the way of the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed him should not perish but have everlasting life. He saw the condition of Israel and saw the condition of all people and said, you know what? I'm not done completely yet. I'll die for them. So they can be regenerated on the inside to get my spirit inside of them and I'll put my laws in the tables of their heart so that from the inside they will desire to live for me. Not the outside laws and commandments that restrict movement, but from the inside they will have it inside of them. They will have a desire to live for me and to obey my word. God is an amazing, merciful God today. Let's stand. Father, we thank you right now. For your awesome lingering love upon us. Thank you for being patient, and gracious, and long suffering, God, in our lives. Lord, let us remain faithful to you so that we would not become desolate and empty and void of your presence. We thank you tonight, God, that you dwell inside of us by your spirit 
And we still feel your love. We still feel your presence. We still hear you speak. And we are not as those who say you don't care and don't see. We love you and we give you all glory and honor and praise, Father God, Lord Jesus, for being our Savior. As I come to a close, I got a question for you. Do you remember how it was before you knew the Lord? Before you got saved? Remember how desolate, how empty you were? You're trying to fill it with so many things in the world. Miserable, lonely. Cried your eyes out at night. Always, always troubled in your soul. And then Jesus Christ saved you. You met him. And he filled you with his spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't want to live in any way to grieve God's spirit or to quench God's spirit. And eventually God say to you or me, I'm done with you. Oh, what a horrible feeling that would be. And I'm not trying to control you or intimidate you by telling you that. I'm giving you the word of God tonight. I'm giving you the word of God. So God's love is amazing, but his wrath is awful. Tonight, do you want to be under his love and grace? If you do, I want you to pray and ask God to cleanse you with his blood. And just offer thanks to him for his mercy and his love to you. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Mighty King of kings and Lord of lords. God, you are so holy. You're so good. You're so awesome. Thank you, Jesus, for your love for us, God. Your mercy upon our lives, God. Judgments are certain to come. They're coming in our nation as well, Father, they're coming on the United States of America. We love you today. All we can do, God, is love you back. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. I feel in my spirit there's somebody out there that's going to hear this message on YouTube. And God's going to talk to them. God's going to stir their hearts because they know they're not right with Him. And uh, I'm going to pray for them. God, right now in Your awesome name, as Your Word goes forth, Lord Jesus, that you would draw the backslider back to you, Father God, and let them know even in the condition they're in right now that you have not left them. And they look at their life, God, and they see all the bad that they've done. I pray, Father God, that they would repent while it's time. Save them, Lord, we pray. God, you won't give up easy, and I thank you for not giving up, Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I preach a hope. I preach hope to you tonight. Not a false hope, but a hope in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Jesus' mighty name. Hmm. You'll never know anything till you know the love of God. There's something very special about the love of God. You never know anything till you know the love of God. And I thank God that I have God's love. And I thank God that God loves you tonight. Praise God. And He doesn't just love you, He loves the sinner. For God so loved the world, the world. He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He loves the sinner and He wants to save him because there is judgment that's coming that's worse than what I read to you tonight. It's called the lake of fire. Lift your hands and worship God. Oh God, oh God, there are seasons in our life, Lord, that we feel so dry. We feel so dry, God. We, our thoughts of our mind that you don't love us. 
God, you love us. You love us. You love us, Jesus. You care, God. You care. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Yeah, Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I feel God's spirit here today. I feel the love of God in this house right now. I feel the presence of God in this house right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Worship him like those in that temple, that future temple. A remnant filled with the spirit in love with the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. God dwells in you tonight. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Lord, I love you today. Praise God. You know, Ezekiel, and we'll see it as we go through it. There were people that were preaching to those that were living for God, that were right with God. They were living for God, were right with God. There were preachers preaching to them and telling, telling them they're going to be judged. And they were right with God. And then there was also preachers that were preaching to those that weren't right with God. And not tell them that they'll be judged. So tonight I'm looking at some people that I believe are right with God. And I'm not going to preach the judgment of God down on your head. Because Jesus Christ died for you on that cross. He died for me on that cross. He took your place. He took my place. I'm preaching the mercy of God. The grace of God. The love of God to you tonight. In Jesus name. But But if we're not right with God. Let us fear. Let us fear. God bless you. God love your soul. You're dismissed in the name of the Lord. Thanks for being in the house of God tonight. Amen.